So this dynamite show opened up with MJF against Takeshita. And uh, lo and behold, match was great. Crowd was hot for this match, by the way. In fact, the crowd was hot from the moment this show began until that one, two, three in the main event. And then they died. <laughs> but man, they were hot for this. They were hot for Takeshita. They booed and cheered MJF. He had a dueling crowd. And finally, at the end, he put old Takeshita in his uh, Fujiwara armbar and then the rolling Fujiwara, and he tapped him out to show you, the fans, if I get a hold of Danielson's arm, I'm going to rip it off and he'll give up. That was great. We had uh, Samoa Joe threatening old Wardlow. Because that, that feud's going to continue. Yeah, hmm. If only we had great heels for a babyface MJF. Can't possibly be this Samoa Joe. Oh, no. Will you stop going back God, to your nonsense, I please? Definitely couldn't you do didn't that get one. what you wanted, and you're just going to beat us over the head with it forever. Yep. We got it. You sure wanted am. MJF to be a babyface. Great. Sure yep. And he wasn't. So hey, are we going to do this reporter? Are you going to keep harping on that? I don't know. You're going to keep throwing up the Jamie fact that like, you're on a cross for MJF? Beat the bunny. And they had a good match until Bunny got dropped on her head, and then Jamie fell on her head, and then they went home. So uh, the Bunny will not be getting a championship match against so Bunny went to a medical Jamie, facility, maybe. Not, Jamie not home. Hader. Had a heel promo with Tony and Soraya. They attacked uh, the librarian, old Leva. <laughs> so hokey. So bad. Leva was so mad about having an L painted on her, but she's a librarian. I mean, what's the problem? It's like having a letterman's jacket. She has a big L on her now because she's a librarian. And Lexi Nair interviews MJF, and we got the promo we've been talking about for most of the show. We had the uh, gauntlet. And am I the only one that thought that if Ricky won, like he would get Jericho at the pay-per-view or next week or whatever? Well, they announced on this show that if he win, he goes through the whole gauntlet, he gets Jericho on this show. So he beats Angelo Parker. He beats Matt Menard. And then it comes down to Daniel Garcia. And they're having a match. They're brawling around ringside. And a man in a mask. I wish he, you know what he would, I wish he would have one of those creepy, uncanny valley human masks where he had a mask of Chris Jericho on Chris Jericho. <laughs> but this guy in the no, crowd. No, you're taking away from the sting one then. Bam! He hits, uh, he hits him with the elbow, which apparently the ref didn't see. And Ricky starts. He should have had an Excalibur mask. Thrown in the ring and pinned. May have been for all I know. That should have been. <laughs> and then he gets in the ring unmasks. It's Chris Jericho. So they are making Ricky jump through hoops to get this match with Chris Jericho at the pay per view, which I expect he will win again. So we'll see. We'll see what they do here. We had an acclaimed promo. This Bowens doesn't trust this Papa ass. Ass dad. So then they did the segment where Brian's getting ready with Takesh in the locker room. And all of a sudden the door locks. He's locked in. And so Roosh is in the ring for the match, the final match that Danielson has to do to get a shot at MJF in the Iron Man match. And MJF runs down to the ring and goes, where's Brian? He's not here. Aubrey, you need to count to ten. So she hates this guy, but it is her job. So she's like... One! And he's like, come on, count! She just looks at him. I heard what you did to that Liv. Yeah, I did. But you know what? You're right. What comes after one? Oh, yeah. Two! So Brian's trying to get out of this locker room. And all he can do is rush through the door. Which, uh... Rush through the door? If MJF were smart, he would have gotten that door from NXT. But no... It's just the door at the building, and Brian Danielson smashes through with his bad shoulder. Now his shoulder's really messed up. You notice as a worker, I, I, I went with this one, but then I grabbed the left side. <laughs> so he goes down to the ring, and it's Brian Danielson versus Roosh. And you know, like, I don't like to get on the fans, but let me tell you something. I heard so many people last night, I think they think they're cool by going, Oh, I turned off the show at 9. I, I don't like this AW. 
Bro, if you turn off this show at nine, you're an idiot. Okay. What, why did they turn off the show? I don't know. They have these excuses, but MJF. This Too match, much MJF. You this, sound like Kingston. This match was so awesome. Like I can't even put into words how awesome this Roosh versus. You know this this Roosh guy. You know, people in. You know he kind of had. You know when he worked lucha in Mexico and everything, kind of had this reputation of. Well, you know, if you're looking for big flips and luch and everything, yeah, he's all right or whatever. He's got a lot of personality, but, well, dude, take this guy and put him in a brawl. And, dude, this guy is absolutely awesome. That The brawl that he had with Moxley, now the brawl he had here with Danielson, they had the best, like, this guy better score high in best brawler. They just fought, and they beat the crap out of each other, and Danielson gigged, and Rush is just killing this guy, and, and MJF's cheering on come. No way Brian can survive this one. And then, of course, you know, Brian eventually hits the knee and, and gets the pin. Golly G Willikers. This match was just great. Awesome. Great match. Absolutely awesome. And then MJF comes down, puts him in the arm bar, and tries to tear his, his old wing off. Then, we had some Impractical Jokers deal. Mm. Then we had the Elite against A.R. Fox and Top Flight. I don't care what anybody says. This was a tale of two matches. Before the break, it was, you know, the Young Bucks aren't going to have a bad match. But it was there, you know. Dante's goes for a dropkick. He's a little too close. They try this spot. It's not perfect. I'm watching it going, eh, you know, this is fine. It's not going to be bad or anything like that. And they went to commercial, and uh, they came back, and oh, my God, the second half of this match was so awesome. And they're trying everything, every crazy spot, and they're pulling off every single one, and the place is going crazy. And the key is that, yes, Top Flight beat the Bucks in a tag match. We all knew it was going to happen. Now you do a six-man with A.R. Fox, and you beat A.R. Fox. So you don't change the trio's titles, but you also don't actually beat Top Flight. You beat their partner. But not only did they do that, they took it one step further, which is, we can't beat A.R. Fox! And they try this finish, he gets out. They try this finish, he counters. They go for the one-winged angel, he does a cradle. Like, he can't, they can't get him. And so finally they're doing a thing, and Kenny happens to flash pin him with a cradle. And I was like, man, you could not have done more for these guys in this feud. Like, it was so good. And uh, I loved that match. And then, well, you know, then we had the main event. Boy, you did not like this, do you? I did not like this. I did not think the match was very good. I thought they did a total TNA finish. And it's a ref bump. Here comes daddy ass. He saves the guy. Another belt shot. And then, you know, Bowens gets pinned. And the guns are the tag team champions. And, and like, Dave is... is defending this like well you know the acclaim they they need challengers we gotta be and i'm thinking bro do you realize do you realize roman reigns hasn't been beaten in 845 days or whatever and i've been saying that for years like it's just one guy after another that you know is gonna lose to roman reigns it's like and they never beat him the acclaimed when they came out were so over and no, you didn't need to beat them. No, we're not out of tag teams. We had so many tag teams, they had to create a six-man title. There's a thousand teams that could have been next for the acclaimed. But they decided to beat them, and it was via cheating. So I presume the acclaimed are just going to win the tag team titles back. It's possible that FTR is going to return and, and beat the guns, and uh, they'll become the champions. But man... It was not time. Bro, I don't have anything against the ass boys. You guys don't get it, okay? <laughs> this is not about the ass boys. It's about the acclaimed. The acclaimed did not need to lose. The acclaimed did not need to be beaten. There was nothing that necessitated them losing. We don't have a lack of teams. We don't have a lack of, of nothing. They were over. 
They were arguably among the most over acts on the entire roster. Wait a second. Wait, d- just losing the belts. If they don't have the belts and all of a sudden the act falls, like then they were never like something. I, I don't believe I, there's to me a lot of truth. And I, I'm not discounting anything that you're saying because I th- you have valid criticisms. But if this is if there's a greater story here at play, which is possibly FTR coming back, which would make sense with how they left and the door they left open with the guns, then okay, because the acclaimed don't need those belts. They are going to be over. Now, if this is just going to be flipping and flopping it back and forth, yes, I agree with you. But I don't think but last night to me, the last thing I'll say is they went one twist too many to me the referee distracted and the belt shot would have been enough not having billy gun run down or any of that sort of stuff to me that's when it was too over the top but other than that i really don't hate this to the level that you do oh, i was not a fan and listen yeah i know that the guns beat ftr the last time we saw ftr i know they did that weird funeral thing okay but to me FTR returning to win the AEW Tag Team titles, which they could never win. To me, I want to see them feud with the acclaimed, not the guns. I think there'll be much, much better matches. I, I would agree with you with that, too. But if you have I two mean, baby face teams, because here's the thing. FTR comes back in and again. They can play heelish, but the fans are going to love them, at least initially, for a little while. Well, you know, it's hard for me to I, believe they won't. I saw them against the acclaimed, and it was not an issue that we had two babyface teams. The fans still went crazy for it. What about all the other teams, though? That's the one thing, too, is they have all of these tag teams, and as a fan of tag team wrestling, I love tag team wrestling. I really wish we would have more impact on these teams and more going on, but... That's up and down the show with some of these feuds and the way people will drop off and come back on shows, you know, months at a time, you know, weeks at a time. They're gone and then they pop back. So I don't know. Here is some actual commentary from Bash and Booger. I love barbecue. It's a lot of fun. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) During this match, uh, I believe uh, Bastion was uh, choking on his chicken wings. Bastion said, uh, Vince, you haven't lived up to your contract. I uh, require... Four or five pizzas delivered in a wheelbarrow. It was at this point that Bastion Burger demanded hot dogs. Were How they delivered it? in a wheelbarrow, too? Yeah. That's a big hot dog. We were told Razor and Zanetti have called. It's a big wiener. <laughs> yes, Brian. Big, juicy wiener. Yes, in between two buns. <laughs> oh, you broke Vinny. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.